So I've been using contrast paints for a while now, but I've only really used them for quick paint jobs or to create some interesting effects when combined with other paints and techniques. I've not really put them to any use on anything bigger or more prominent than an average rank and file miniature, but I wanted to change that. So I thought I would take a shot at painting up this Triumph of St. Catherine miniature using predominantly contrast paints with a few highlights and some metallics thrown in. Contrast paints are okay at creating differences in light and shadow. They can create a deeper shade of color within a recess, but they're not magic and won't create actual shadows on their own. So we need to help them out with a bit of zenithal shading. I began by assembling the miniatures so that all the individual sisters, cherubim and floating bed were kept separate from the base. I drilled small holes into the bases of all of these and super glue a length of one millimeter wire into them before bending at the shape of a rough handle. Over this bare plastic, I began with a coat of black primer. This gave me a good surface to work from and also became my shadow layer. Over this black, I then sprayed Gracia from an angle just above the model. This meant that some of the areas of the miniature weren't hit by the paint and so remained black, or at least a shade of dark grey. By limiting my angle to only being from above, those black areas formed where shadows would likely form on a larger real person. The choice of grey here was also a conscious one as well. The light colouring would allow the contrast paints to retain their intensity when applied over the top. So, each of the steps I followed for painting on the base coat of this miniature were essentially the same technique, just with different paints. Each colour saw me using a contrast paint straight from the pot, no medium, no transfer into a palette, just dipping the brush into the pot and removing a little of the excess on the rim. This meant that my brush was saturated in the paint, which allowed me to cover up uh, some larger areas of the miniature without having to go back to my pot to refill the brush. Fewer top-ups meant that I could ensure that the coverage remained consistent over the surface and helped me to avoid the formation of tide lines or brush marks. Contrast paints, especially the rich colours, work far better when used in larger quantities, but you do need to make sure that you have you don't ever have too much paint on your brush. You don't want it to be so much that you can't simply can't control where it flows. Now, while contrast paints do speed up the painting process a little, I find that you actually have to be even more careful not to overspill into areas that you haven't yet painted. We need to maintain the clean gray sear so that when we paint over it, the mistakes don't show through due to the translucent nature of these paints. So, take your time and use a smaller brush when painting next to other unpainted parts if necessary. It's all about having good control, but if you do overspill, take a clean brush and, after dipping it into some clean water, use it to try and remove as much as you can. Give a chance to dry and then reapply your gray seal with the brush to return to that solid surface color. So with the technique covered, we can actually look at the paints I actually used. Well, for the robes and the armor, I began with Blood Angels Red. This gives me a really strong and intense color and is probably my favorite out of all the contrast paints available. Just make sure you keep the inside trim of the robes clear during this step as we want to apply a lighter tan color to them. You can also use this paint later on to pick out some of the various pipes and lenses on your cherubs as well. You can also use some of this thin with contrast medium later on in this process to give those rose petals out on the plate a slightly pinkish and red coloration. To help to give some definition to the gloves and bodices whilst retaining the red color scheme of the Order of the Blooded Rose, I opted to use Flesh Terrors Red, which features a darker, deeper red tone. The aptly named Stake by Leather was next used to pick out the holsters, straps, and any other leather areas found across the model. This also includes the cover of any books that you may have as well. What we have next are the various off-white parts of the model. These include the inside lining of the robes, any paper scrolls, candles and ivory inlays on the shield and floating bed. A good color to use for all of these areas is Skeleton Horde. Gilliman Flesh provides us with a perfect, slightly pale flesh tone with which to tackle both the faces of our sisters as well as the cherubim that float above them. The rosary beads, the hair, wings, and any other areas of pure white were given a very subtle coat of apothecary white. The effect here is a very subdued, but will help to smooth out the xenophile shading that we created during the priming step. I would highly recommend changing your paint water before tackling this step as well. The pale color has a tendency of picking up colors from other paints from your water if you're not careful.
So wild wood will be used, unsurprisingly, for the wooden parts of the model. The slightly greyish brown it produces is great to use over the staff handle and the frame of the bed. As it pulls away slightly from the sharper edges of the frame, you'll be left with some easy, straightforward highlights as well. Next, I wanted to not only paint the black areas of the model, but also to give the metal areas a dark base color that I could just highlight with a metallic later. So to paint these black areas, let's use a gray, basilicanum gray to be precise. Now it might seem strange to do this, but by layering down a gray first, we help to darken the surface slightly as applying black templar over a pure gray sear can often end up creating a patch result, which is less than ideal. Once your basilicanum grey has fully dried, you can then hit it all those areas again with some black templar. So you may be asking why I didn't you just double up on the black templar here rather than using the grey before. Well, if we'd used two layers, we would have instead been left with a pure black with none of the subtle shading and highlighting that the contrast paints produce. By using the basilicanum grey below, then when we apply the black templar over the top, we still have a slight amount of difference between the upper and lower areas, which will help to enhance that detail. Over the purity seals and the overstuffed cushioning of the floating platform, I'll be using some Volupus Pink. I should note that after my first layer, I wasn't quite happy with the coverage, so I applied a second coat over the top of that to give me a deeper colour than I was initially left with. For the flames on the candles, I approached them in two steps. I began by using some Iandin Yellow on the flame and the flat top of the candle just below it, and this created a slightly object sort light, source lighting effect. And then I left the root of the flame with the lighter gray sear base coat to, still visible to simulate an intensity of heat. Over this yellow base coat, I apply just a little Griffhound orange to the upper, cooler part of the flames. This technique was also used to tackle the flaming chalice relic as well. To paint some of the smaller pipes, gemstones, lenses, and ivy on the model, you can use the rich green of orc flesh. With all the contrast base colors completed, the next step was to tackle the numerous areas of gold across the model using some retributor armor. In hindsight, it may have been better to do this earlier in the process, but it wasn't too problematic in the end due to my sub-assemblies. If you're familiar with my guides, you will already know that I recommend thinning down your regular paints with a little water and applying a couple of layers. This helps to uh, make the paint flow more smoothly over the surfaces and results in a good solid base color to build up from. Speaking of which, I then applied a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade over the top of all the gold areas. This will give the gold a slightly warmer tone whilst also flowing into the recesses, therefore helping to improve the shading and creating more definition. The next metallic to use was Lead Belcher, but instead of using this as a base colour, I instead opted to use it as a highlight instead. By just focusing on the edges of the metal areas and then combining it with, with the Black Templar base coat that we applied earlier, we help to create the appearance of a dark blackened steel. This darker metal will contrast nicely against the brighter colors on the model, whilst also eliminating the need to uh, apply any further washes or highlights in order to emphasize details. So normally I just hit the base of models with some textured paint, a wash and a dry brush, but as this particular miniature came with its own sculpted base, I decided to follow the same contrast paint steps that I use on the rest of the model. I began with applying a couple of coats of Skeleton Horde over the stone areas to create the appearance of sandstone. The tiled areas in the center will be painted with a Callian green to give them a nice dark turquoise color. Finally, the few metal areas on the base will be painted in the same way as we have done already. To bring out some of the details and to give the base a slightly dusty texture, I decided to do some dry brushing. Now dry brushing involves taking a brush, loading it with paint and working that paint through the bristles by wiping away the excess onto a piece of paper. You can then lightly drag this brush over the model surface, which will cause a small amount of paint to accumulate on just the raised edges. It's essentially a quick and dirty way to highlight a large area. For the steps, I used a shabti bone over the tiles I used some techless blue. Finally, I applied some stone colored weathering pigment over the whole base to give it a dusty, ruined appearance. So as your miniature stands now, everything should be painted and what you do next is really up to you. You can keep things simple and get your model assembled and onto the gaming table straight away and it would look perfectly fine. However, if you wanted to bring out some of those details, you could apply some highlights to some of the upper areas of the models. For example, Wild Rider Red and a Shabti Bone are great for enhancing those reds and off-whites respectively. 
Other areas you could highlight include some of the facial features with some clear flesh, or the white areas using some white scar. It's unnecessary to highlight everything or even every edge. We want to keep the process pretty quick still, and the highlights will just add an extra time. But like I said, the contrast paints alone do a pretty good job, so you can skip this step entirely. So once you've finished painting everything, the only thing left to do is to fully assemble your miniature. Just make sure you clean up those contact points before gluing. And then give everything a coat of matte varnish to protect the paintwork, and also to remove some of the glossy sheen that contrast paints often leave. So how did I find painting a model like this in contrast paint? Well, for the most part, they worked really well. The result was never going to be on par with some of the more traditional base layer wash highlight techniques, but it was incredibly easy to do. I wouldn't say that they made painting this larger model super quick, but compared to other techniques, it was certainly faster. So what do you think of the result? Is it good enough for the display cabinet or should it be resigned to storage? when it's not on the gaming table. Either way, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you were able to learn something from it. Now, before I go on, let me just say a big thank you to you guys who support me on Patreon. Your continued support in making these videos is amazing and I really appreciate your help. If you'd like to help out too, I've included a Patreon paid link in the description below where you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month. And for anyone looking to chat about all things Wargaming with others who also enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.